I was born the uh, 10th of March 1918 in Gaganau. This is a black forest in Germany. The first memory of aviation was in Gaganau. I was not even, maybe I was three years old. And uh, this was right after uh, the war, the First World War. And I was st uh, staying in a kitchen in Gaganau. We had a very nice house. And I heard a noise. Brrrr, and my mother took me out and I saw the first plane up there. This is my first memory in aviation. And I was three, four years old. It, it was an airplane. And I wonder to me. I saw the Zeppelin because the Zeppelin was built in Friedrichshafen. This was my second home in Bad Württemberg, in Württemberg south at the Lake Costas. And certainly uh, the first Zeppelin made these propaganda round trips, you know, through Stuttgart, through the Alps, through Switzerland, and I saw many times. Uh, it was uh, fascinating, you know, because uh, the uh, aviation was not that developed as it is now, and uh, the future of a Zeppelin was also not uh, uh, specialized. And, uh, Graf Zeppelin, he was a well-respected great man, and this was his first uh, product. Uh, you know, we were forced, not politically, but uh, economically, you know. Uh, the Versailles Treaty gave us very poor chance to come, go up again, and that was a hard work for the parents, uh, because most families started very below or at zero. So the main uh, challenge was how to build up things. Certainly, there were in parties. So at that time, uh, Germany had 37 parties, which was just a, a, a horrible thing. You know, you cannot run a country with uh, 37 parties. I joined the military. I joined the army as a cadet. Uh, I didn't have any relationship to the aviation, but I wanted to become an officer, and uh, I made my application, and I was accepted, and I joined the army in 1936 as a cadet. It was difficult, I can tell you. The army had, my regiment, had 74 applications from schoolboys, the one of a cadet, and only four were accepted. And I was accepted, went through the whole thing, and uh, was then came to the officer's school, to Dresden, and there in getting contact with aviation, because a friend of mine, he started right as a cadet in the Air Force. And there was an Air Force school, a training school, and we met every Saturday. And he talked and uh, told me where he was and flying around in Germany, and said, so, that's it. Uh, he made me really... Uh, eager to go to the... And then I made an application and went to the Air Force. You know, my first military plane, you know, it became fire pilot sailing. This was the uh, Stieglitz biplane. Very simple, not many instruments, no cockpit, no cabin, free cockpit. So the old days. You, also, you know, we had different training system in Germany. When we uh, started to f uh, train a pilot, we flew around the, the base, take off landing. This was the first. And then you go further than we had in, in the whole training program. We had cross country, we had uh, acrobatics, we had night flying, all these. And it took about more than a year until you get your wings. And it, during this time, I flew several types. It was uh, surprising. Till I get my wings, I flew at least 10 different types. This was uh, the Stieglitz, this was Heinrich Kadett, this was Bücher Jungmann, Jungmeister, this was Go 145, this was uh, even uh, uh, W34 for night flying and it's well flying. So there was a variety of airplanes. But uh, uh, we, we went through all these different types and different uh, 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 training phase, uh, as I told you, take off landing, then uh, more improved uh, acrobatics, then uh, night flying also, 
then uh, cross country flying with all the navigation uh, problems. Uh, this was all to, uh, to had to be completed before you got the wings. But you know, we got the wings that makes you a pilot. But it's not uh, decided which trade you go fighter pilot, bomber pilot, reconnaissance, or whatever it is. Then you get a special training. I want to become a fighter pilot, and then I went to the fighter school. And this took another four months, then on different types, planes, certainly fighter planes. And then you, if you completed that, then you, was, uh, then you go to the wing. Uh, we, <laughs> we flew uh, obsolete aircraft still. Uh, biplanes, you know, Arado 862 uh, and this type, uh, the, the whole training, and we flew all different tactics also. We flew the three ship formation. When I came to the uh, uh, normal combat wing, we had the four ship, one, two, three, four, which was developed down in the Spanish Civil War, you know, by the Legion Condor. Uh, this was a new tactics, and I had, at the end of my fighter pilot training, only two or three rides in a 109. The aircraft which I ex expected in the combat wing. Then we flew only the, uh, the 109, 109 E model. Uh, the 109 was a good airplane. But you have some critical problems, you know, starting with uh, the cockpit. Very tight cockpit. Very poor visibility to the back. Yeah? You know, you had in the 109 the, the cannon between your legs and, and the feet and, and two channels. Then, uh, the 109 had a very uh, sen sensitive undercarriage. You know, narrow. If you look at the uh, P 51, boom, stable. The 109 had narrow and a little bit cost. Uh, we did have problems, but many pilots had problems with the ground glue, but it was cut off. Then you had slots. Yeah, uh, you also had this was an uh, advantage, and certain thing was a disadvantage. If you are in the air in a dogfight later right on, and you have to turn roughly, then just by gravity the, the, the outer slot came out and then it couldn't snap. So you have to know that. Uh, but the 109 was a modern aircraft. And you could compare the 109 with the old European types, so the Spitfire, and whatever it was. You know, it was a good air when I flew it in the different uh, 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 types. We started in the war, I started in the wing with the E model. When I came back after one, one and a half, half years from Greed Island, we got the F, F model, which was the best one, with the round wing tips, no struts. You know, and uh, not too overloaded. And then we got in Russia the G model, the H model, or in German, in, in the in uh, over Germany. Uh, so we had different models, and uh, they were good. But uh, anyway, it also there problems. I started with a second group of Wing 52, and uh, after the. Uh, now, before the, uh, we went into France, they built a new group, the th third group, 52, and this where I fought the war for the next three and a half years. Third group, 52. Yes, this was on the 12th May, 1940, over France. Uh, we, uh, our mission was to, to uh, protect uh, uh, Heinle 111, a uh, reconnaissance plane going back from France. And uh, the rendezvous point was about Metz. And when we approached 12 aircraft, or 10, you know, the structure for wing were, uh, of a squadron was 4, 4, 3, 4, that's uh, 12. And uh, so we went in. Here was a squadron commander. I, I was the leader of the second element. And I saw them over Metz in 6,000 meters. This was my first contact. And this Heinle 111 was chased by, we didn't know the, the type now because we only had spots behind, you know, but out of the shoot, shooting uh, distance, approaching. And then we got a contact and uh, the Heinrich came safely back to Germany and we were <laughs> involved in this dogfight. Oh yeah, this was my first victory. You know, this was a Curtis, Curtis P-36. 
French Air Force, you know, the French didn't have um, a home product that their graphs was report them. This was an American type. And this was the first victory. I was, as I told the second element came down and uh, got him from, you know, you, you approach these, these uh, enemy planes to the closest distance, you know. Uh, you have to close in, so I came very close and uh, got him in my, in my visor and uh, he caught fire and went down and then I was hit several times and very loud and boom and through. Uh, I would say this is a good thing for the first contact. You get self-confidence because you are the victory, but you also get a warning. But you can be hit and the next time you can be the one who goes down. No? The first contact was in May and after the when France, uh, France was beaten, we were pulled out. No, we were transferred to uh, uh, no, we we got to a German base. We got May West because we had to fly over the sea, and from there we went down to Dunkirk to Coquel near Calais against England. You know, this was the first real serious engagement on the other side of the Spitfire and Hurricanes or the dead good planes, and we were the attackers, and we had to escort. 287, which is a slow flying aircraft, heavy bombs underneath, and we had the order to stay the close to them. The Spitfire start waited up there, so we had heavy losses. And many going down, parachute and channel, and they were appeared. We had losses in the Battle of Britain. Uh, my group commander was killed. The accident was shut down, my squadron commander was shut down, and at the age of 22 I became squadron commander. Then, after that period of time, we had very heavy missions. We were pulled out, got new airplanes, new pilots, and then we went down to Romania and put on. The first time I was wounded was in Russia. Yeah, it was in Russia. And this was near Saboroshe. And what happened? It's in the Nepal, you know, down in the Ukraine. Uh, we were in a dogfight with Russians. And I had a young pilot, very talented pilot, going for pilot. And I directed him and I was concentrated on him. Now, left turn, take the lead, and, and so, got him orders. Very tough dogfight. And I, uh, all of a sudden, explosion in my uh, airplane. You know, we had these oxygen bottles. These were three of these bottles separated. High pressure. And this uh, Russian guy hit my, hit me, and went. The bullet went through this oxygen bottle with a high pressure and <laughs> exploded. And all the hatches of the plane. We are now outside. And if he would hit the whole thing, the whole thing would be exploded. And this was uh, for just for a, a security problem that we uh, separated all these bottles from the other one, shut them. Not that you have the whole explosion. This was my, uh, yeah. And then, I, uh, you know, we had a steel plate uh, to protect the head. Okay shooting from the back which had a negative uh, also a negative result that you couldn't see backwards and this thick thing was ah, it cut me here and I thought this, uh, that's a bullet you know I had a, a feeling like that has some blood all over and uh, this was this was the consequence of the explosion and this steel blade hit me this was the first one I could land. I mean, this was still under control. My worst injury was uh, 28 November 41. I flew with my, it was a different area, this was near uh, Rostov and Taganrog. 
And I flew until late afternoon a mission with my adjutant. I was commander, group commander, whatever. And uh, we had low clouds, snow, temperatures minus 30 degrees. And uh, we got in contact with two Russians. <coughs> and I approached the Russian top fight and got him and, and get down in flames and was blinded. You know, this, this was late afternoon and there was, there was the flames. And in this very moment, the second one came and got me. And I was out. And uh, the East was chased then by my uh, escort and he got him. But I was out and had to get down and there was, I just came in, there was a bicolor, what we say, I have kids, who's your schlucht? We have a name of schlucht, we come on the side. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's like a cut, you know? A cut in the landscape. Cut yeah. in the landscape. Like, like uh, yeah? uh, river valley, a very narrow river valley. And like I, I wanted like to. Like a ravine, and yeah. I saw ravine exactly, the right word. My <laughs> landing was exactly there, you know? Jesus, my client. And then I pushed it down and hit the ground with the belly, no wheels, it was snow, jumped up again because I had too high speed and then I was stalling and right into this. And the last thing I saw this wall coming up to me and bang and out. And I was out for five hours. German tanks came, you know, and they told me what happened. The, the wings came off. The the, 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 the engine flew 40 meters through the air and it was a wreckage, the whole thing. And it was hanging in and they didn't know how to open this cracked canopy. And one of them came, came one of them said they pulled me out, put me in a car and towed a uh, tug and walk. This was a night already. And in this car, I came to conscious and had awful pains. What happened? Uh, it was uh, laid on, found by the medical doctors. I had uh, broke my back three times. And this was, took me to hospital through a tremendous treatment in a, in a cast, in a, a stretch cast, which I wore for six months, you know, and then came to, to a, a home hospital and we had, oh, it took time, long time. So it took me out of action of about nine months. This was the worst. You know, many memorable words, you know, but one. Uh, what well, was mid air collision? This was over the, the uh, pocket battle of Kursk, a big tank battle. And in the late afternoon, I flew with my adjutant a mission and flew over this uh, enemy land from the west to the east. The sun was deep. Uh, in the west, the late afternoon sun, and in the east was a tremendous cumulus cloud going up to 6,000 meters. It was lit by the sun. And we flew west-east and saw two spots against this cumulus. And I approached, and when I came, I only saw a silhouette. I couldn't uh, see the color. And I saw this was a, a, it had already an engine. And I know. Two days before, in my area, came the Fokkewul 190. This was uh, uh, Israeli then, she said, Jesus Christ, it could be a 190. You know, so I didn't pull the trigger, and I passed him, went up, looked down, green, red star. Now I couldn't turn off, otherwise I would be chased. So I had to get down, got in a stall, crashed him, cut him off with my propeller, the right wing, and he cut off my, my body. He get went down. This was no chance. And I was getting over the German t uh, turn lines, you know. And I thought that the engine comes off. Oh, this tremendous vibration. And I was always looking which is the, the best RPM to get it served. I landed uh, safely and then I saw what happened, you know. But this was a very dramatic thing. Uh, and, and there are many, many... Uh, traumatic uh, situations in a dogfight. The next one was this one. Uh, this was 12 May, 44. This was uh, in uh, over Germany. They uh, got me off, they shut the thumb off, and 
on chase me with four P-47 and uh, there was no chance to escape. And I pulled it up and bailed out without a thump. <laughs> uh, you know, this was a big, the, the big strategic air war fair. Uh, I had a, another group, of a group commander in North Germany, also with the 109, and we got the uh, call from the division commander uh, five o'clock in the morning, 50 minute alert. We got all the, we listened to the uh, radio tuning of the 8th Air Force over in England, and we expect a big bomb bread. And for the 50 minutes alert, and 10 minutes alert, five minutes alert, cockpit alert, and uh, I get the order with, with the, the, the enemy reaches this and this geographic area, then you get takeoff. And so I could take off, and I was the, the uh, uh, this was a group of 75 uh, airplanes, 50 Foggy Wolves for the, for the bombers, and I as a torpedo against the, the, uh, the fighters of the FA force. And we pulled up to 8,000. 11,000 meters, I was marched on. Then they came. This was a, a, a bomb bread, 800 bombers, B 17s, B 24s, protected, or not, covered the whole airspace from the Harz Mountains down to Stuttgart with 1,000 fighters. It was quite a thing. We were with 75. So this was the, uh, the time when I was, I had my. My last victory was there. This was a P-47, and uh, then I was chased, and there was no chance. Thumb came off, and then I fell out. You know, in the 109, it was risky. The 109, uh, like I give you a term, Marseille is a big rift. Marseille had to bail out because he had the engine problem and smoke in the cockpit. He was not shut down. And then he was a no, a horizontal flight. Bailed out was. By the, by the wind, just uh, into the, uh, in the, the reel, in the tail, cut his head and he came down dead. And this was always a, the risk. When you get out, not to get, that's too close, you know, the rudder in the back. And uh, it, if you hit, could be dead. I was pulling up until the aircraft stalled. You know, my, reason was I want to get out. The, the P-47s who chased me, they couldn't follow all the way up because they would go back, back to England. So I, the aircraft turned in a stall and it was hanging outside. You know, in those days you had to do all this manually. There was no, no automatic system. Uh, finally I made it and it was not easy. Uh, you know, you were uh, tumbled and uh, you couldn't reach the handle until the body is now, not even from wood, just falling down, uh, because all these swinging arms and legs have a stabilizing factor also. And when it's stabilized, it, and then the, the chute opened, and I, I was against happy, you know, because it was risky for me, uh, after I had broken my back, to have a tremendous crash on the ground. So I came in a, in a wood and it was hanging on the tree. It was much softer. <laughs> this was somewhere in Germany, north of Frankfurt, the west of Alp, what we call it. And uh, I was hanging in three meters up. And then I struck it to the stem. It cut, uh, fixed me. And then, and then, whoom, fall down. And again, very lucky. The ground was not this, the ground was a steep slope, so that the impact was not strong. And I rolled out, bum, 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 bum. And then I walked down <laughs> the, uh, the small trail in the wall, and then farmers came, you know, and they took me back to the uh, little village. Uh, you know, this took time. I was uh, quite a time in the hospital because I get. I uh, get uh, infection, and then it was uh, still open. I had a leather protection, and uh, I want to go to my wing. I was, the higher command said, you, you cannot go in combat with this 
with this bone look at outside and not heal. Uh, so I became commander of the, of the fighter uh, leader school for three months. And this was a good time for me because I had the chance to fly all American planes. You know, we had captured planes and uh, refurnished with, with, with our uh, uh, science on the plane. And so I got, could, and I was eager certainly to fly the quality of these planes. And uh, I flew the P-47, the P-51, the P-38, Spitfire, and I got a chance to get uh, 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 also trained on the 262. So this I took the best out of that time. And then I went back. I became a wing commander of the, of the Fighter Wing 300. And with this wing, I finished the war until the end. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the war ended near the place I'm right now living. Yeah, we were shortly, uh, shortly from, uh, in front of Salzburg. This was finished and uh, uh, there was nothing anymore, you know. And then we saw the Americans coming. Uh, there was a big uh, mass of uh, uh, cars and tanks and what the hell was it, Benito. And then I called the group commander, said, you get me this. You get this direction, you get this direction, and every man is allowed to take with him what he ever wants, you know, the mechanics, for instance, or the tools. That's a basic for new existence. So, so we finished, and uh, to make the long story short, I went to the Lake Kim Say, and there I became prisoner of war, an American prisoner of war. Uh, we were treated like, like you normally treat a mass of people. <laughs> there are goodies and, and bads. But I, I, do, I don't complain. We were taken uh, then to, uh, up to the, the Frankfurt area, and then they selected your, your um, uh, CIC, or Secret Service. They selected six of us uh, fly uh, pilots, and they know much better my uh, life uh, history than I, absolutely. And then we were taken to England for interrogation. And the treatment was very good there. Yeah. In contrast to the Russian treatment, when the, my, many, many of my friends were shut down over Russia, and many never appeared. Now my wife came out of Vienna just with the last train and uh, they waited in uh, Germany till I come back from somewhere else. He didn't know where I was as a prisoner of war. I was an American prisoner of war, but it was uh, led to the, to the British for interrogation. So I had the chance to, to be together with the, all the British fighter pilots, ACES, uh, in Tangmere at the British Fighter Leader School for three or four weeks. And we fought the war every day again. Are very, but they are very gentlemen like. Uh, you know, the first time I was addressed, when you are a prisoner in a mess, and you have the guard, you march snail over the machine gun here. Uh, and now, over there, when we came, we, we were two, Rudel and myself. When we came to come, we were flown over from Sherpur. They put us in prison, which is normal, but they left the door open. They say, Rudel, it's a good sign. <laughs> they left the door open. And shortly after came a very smart British wing commander, and then he was gentleman. It's the first time I was addressed as gentleman. Uh, I'm so sorry. We didn't expect you that early. Did you have lunch? I said, No, sir, I didn't have lunch for the last three months. <laughs> then they were, they took us in the owner's club. And, and then, we started talking. And this was, uh, even with these guys, we became friends after the war. They came to Germany. So this is typical for fighter pilots, uh, contact and situation. And then when the war ended, you know, we had to, the, 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 the aim was to get your family and was a family and all the like that. So I give you a number. <coughs> German Air Force trained put in action about 20,000 fighter pilots. 2,000 came back, one-tenth. 
is only overdone by, by the submarines. They had more. Uh, so when you survived, you were a lucky man. <laughs>